Hey everybody, this is D Hunter bringing you another action figure review. Today, we're going to look at the McFarlane Mortal Kombat 11 Shao Kahn and Liu Kang action figures. Not only that, but these are the Platinum Chase variant bloody editions of the figures. Now I'd given up any chance of ever finding them at stores, so I got these guys on eBay. I was able to find them for a very fair price, about twice retail. Not too bad, I can finally check them off my list, and my Mortal Kombat collection is complete again. So let's go ahead and check out the packaging. As you can see at the top, age is 14 plus, this is not a toy, always find that pretty funny. McFarlane Toys, Mortal Kombat 11, Shao Kahn, Platinum Edition. So you can see he's got blood on his chest, blood on his hands, blood on his hammer. Beyond that, Shao Kahn is just a badass figure, one of the best in the entire line. On the back, here he is standing there. I notice they use the same picture of the regular version. At the bottom, there is a barcode, but it's going to be the same as the regular Shao Kahn, so it's probably not going to help you track down this version. Then we have Liu Kang as well. He's looking pretty good. Blood on his hand, blood on his chest. I can even see a little bit of blood on his nunchucks. Looking fantastic. McFarlane Platinum Edition. Backside, same thing, the standard version. And there's his barcode as well. So no further ado, let's open them up. All right, now that we got these figures out of the package, here they are with all their accessories laid out. Now I'll start off by saying the Shao Kahn and Liu Kang figures are absolutely excellent, but these are even better. These are the bloodied up Chase variant versions. So first of all, we have Shao Kahn. He comes with his Wrath Hammer and a display stand. And then we have Liu Kang. He has a display stand, two alternate hands, totally four interchangeable hands, and his nunchucks. In this video, we're going to take a look at each figure individually. We'll check out their accessories, height, and articulation. Then we're going to compare them to all the other McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. I finally have a complete collection. And then we'll check them out compared with some action figures from different various companies to see how they fit in both scale and style wise. So let's start off with Shao Kahn. So here's Shao Kahn. He has his Wrath Hammer and his display stand. But before we take a look at the accessories, let's take a look at him. Shao Kahn is a very big, imposing, impressive looking figure very muscular. He's really tall, taller than the other Mortal Kombat figures, and I feel like he could still even be a little taller. So starting off with his mask, I wish it was removable, but it's so cool the way it is. Just the different texturing on the different pieces there. It's huge, it's long, you can see the sort of samurai-esque helmet there. Looks great, got the fangs on top of his mouth. Two big shoulder pads. This one's got more armor on his bicep and it's soft it'll sort of fold under if you move it up and you can sort of move it tuck it around place you see the different texturing on the different parts of his skin double jointed elbows double jointed knees the bloody damage on his chest on his hand really like what I'm seeing so far Now let's take a look at his accessories. And let's start with the boring stuff. Here's his display stand. Typical McFarland stand. Black perfect circle. It says Mortal Kombat on the bottom. One peg for the pegles on her feet. It's very thin. Very basic. And then we have his hammer. The Wrath Hammer. This thing looks great. It's got the Mortal Kombat logo on the top. Big spike. Sort of pleated edges like a meat cleaver, and this one's got blood all over it. It has been used to hit an opponent. Going further down on the handle, the bottom, it's red, has some sort of wrap, good sculpting detail. Overall, this is a fantastic accessory. Here it is, next to the clean version that came with the standard Shao Kahn. Here's Shao Kahn holding his hammer. He can hold it with either one hand or with two. And with this bloody damage on the hammer, it looks like he just brought it down on Liu Kang. Now that we've taken a pretty good look at both the figure and his accessories, now let's check out his height. From bottom to the top of his head, sitting at about 7.75 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 19.5 centimeters. And if you go to the top of his helmet, 
It's about 8.75 inches tall. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, of course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down about that far, pretty nice. Can't tilt his head from one side to the other, giving him a good amount of personality. Shoulders on a ball joint, you can go out about 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. There is a butterfly joint between his chest and shoulder area here, just increasing the range of motion. He's got a bicep cut below that, double jointed elbows below that. His wrists can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. He's got a ball joint in his torso here, can rotate from side to side, go forward and back. Another ball joint down here can also rotate around and go forward and back, give him a pretty good range of motion his entire torso. Legs, not on ball joints, they go out this far. Similar type concept, but not a ball joint. They can rotate, eh, almost not at all, just a little bit. Forward, about that far, kind of limited. Back, about that far. He's got double jointed knees below that. Then his ankle here goes forward and back, can rotate, it can tilt, rock, and there's toe articulation. Now on this side, his shoulder's gonna be a little bit obstructed for this extra armor, but it is soft, it can sort of tuck inside of there, and if you move out of the way, his arm can go all the way back. And just a side note, after testing the articulation, the spikes on both his shins and feet are quite sharp, so be careful. Now let's look at the differences between the standard Shao Kahn and the bloodied Platinum Chase version. So 100% the same sculpt and paint job, with the exception of this guy's got a whole bunch of blood on his chest here. He's got blood on his left hand, and then blood on his right hand and forearm. Beyond that, everything's the same. This guy does also have blood on his hammer. Now let's look at Liu Kang. He comes with a display stand, two alternate hands, totally four interchangeable hands, and some nunchucks. So here he is. I'll say I think the face likeness of the game looks great. The hair looks pretty good, the bandana. He's got his bloody damage on his chest, shoulder, hand, and his other hand. Looks like we've got double jointed elbows, double jointed knees, pants textured. Overall, I think he looks pretty good. Not my favorite version of Liu Kang, but definitely, definitely good execution. And then, here's the figure broken down as far as he can go, with all of his removal parts detached. Now this is the second version of Liu Kang they've made. This is the blighted up variation. There is a third version down the road. It's gonna have orange pants on, no shirt on. Now I've seen some people take this guy's shirt off to see what he looks like. He does have a fully sculpted torso, but his pants sit up so high it just looks weird. Now let's look at his accessories. It's the exact same display stand that came with Shao Kahn. Now let's look at his hands. He comes with four of them. The two gripping hands have blood on them, and the other two hands are clean. There's no reason you shouldn't be able to swap out the hands with the previous version if you're interested. Here he is with his first pair of hands. These are his clean hands. His right hand here is flat. Could be karate chopping, or also perhaps waving someone in to accept the challenge. Then his other hand here, the index finger's out, kind of looks like it's pointing. And here, with his two bloodied up gripping hands. And like I said before, there's no reason you can't take the clean gripping hands off the standard Liu Kang and put them on this version. And of course, you can do the same thing vice versa. Now let's look at his nunchucks. They have gold chain between them. You can see some blood on it. Then they have these red handles. Nice sculpting detail. Those little gold beads all over it. And there's some different texture where he's going to grip it. Here are these nunchucks next to the original version. Completely identical. Minus a little bit of blood on the gold chain. Here he is holding the nunchucks. And since I have both versions of Liu Kang, I can have him dual wielding both nunchucks. Now let's check out his height. From bottom to top, he's sitting at about 7.1 inches tall, which is going to translate to about 18 centimeters. Now let's check out his articulation. Starting with his head here, 
course, it can rotate from side to side. He can look up and down about that much. Can tilt his head from one side to the other, giving him a good amount of personality. Shoulders on a ball joint. You can go out more than 90 degrees, up, down, around, all that good stuff. He does have a butterfly joint between his shoulder and chest area, just increasing the range of motion there. Bicep cut below that. Double jointed elbows below that. His wrist here, it can rotate and it's going to be hinged as well. He's got a ball joint is torso, I believe, but can't really get much use out of it because of soft goods overlay. He's got another one in his waist here. It can rotate around, can also go forward and back, giving him a decent amount of range of motion there. His legs go out about this far, not a ball joint, similar type concept. Rotation is almost non existent. Then go forward about that far, back, not too much. Double jointed knees below that. Then his ankle here goes up and down. It can rotate, can tilt and rock, and their toe articulation. Here's the standard Liu Kang next to the bloodied variant. They have 100% the same sculpt and paint job, except for he's got the blood splatter on his chest. He's got some of it on his bicep here. On his left hand, knuckles are bloodied up and the same thing on his right hand. Beyond that, they're identical, except for the nunchuck that has a tiny bit of blood on the gold chain. Here's Liu Kang, trying to take out Shao Kahn in his throne room. This is how the match starts out. Both of them go in clean. And Liu Kang here just will not give up. Liu Kang taking the upper hand. And even though Liu Kang has some really nice moves, I think Shao Kahn is gonna win if he doesn't have any help. And that is exactly what happened here. Now let's check them out next to some other action figures. Starting off with some other McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. Here's the bloodied up version of Shao Kahn and Liu Kang next to the clean versions. Here's the rest of this assortment of Mortal Kombat figures. There were four figures in the wave and the bloody chase variants. We've got In the Shadow Scorpion, Shao Kahn, Liu Kang, and Winter Purple Sub-Zero. And here they are with the previous assortment of McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures. Coincidentally, these were also bloody paint variants. And here's my entire McFarlane Mortal Kombat collection. With all the variants, I've got a total of 22 figures. Looking very forward to Noob and Cabal upcoming. And now let's check them out next to some action figures from different various companies to see how they fit in both scale and style wise in case you want to know which lines you can mix them with. Here they are with some of their McFarlane Toys brothers. In front of you are five different action figure lines, all from McFarlane Toys, all 7 inch scale, all from different various video game properties. Now, next is some more McFarlane lines from non video game properties. And here they are, next to some DST or Diamond Select toys. Then, next to some DC Direct and DC Collectibles figures. And here, next to some NECA figures. Then, next to some Mattel wrestling figures. And here they are, next to some Mezco 112th cloth soft goods action figures. Then, next to some Mattel DC Universe Classics and Multiverse figures. And here, next to some Mafex figures. Then, next to some Hasbro Marvel Legends. And here they are, next to some SH Figure Arts action figures. And finally, Next to some Jazzwares Fortnite figures. So overall, these are some pretty cool figures and some pretty cool chase variants. The bloodied up variants are a little cooler than the bronze variants in the McFarland DC Multiverse line. At least these you can use in different scenarios. I'll say Shao Kahn is probably my favorite of the entire McFarland Mortal Kombat line. Liu Kang was a great addition as well. These guys have nice accessories. Their paint job and sculpt is excellent. Their articulation is pretty good. A little clunky at times, especially in the thigh rotation area. So overall, pretty good chase figures. Finally completed my Mortal Kombat collection. Looking forward to what they bring on next. So this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add to the comment section. If 
you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.